I said, you give the devil. Some of you keep the devil up at night and you don't even realize that he's trying to keep you up at night. So, oh, but, well, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I might as well say it. Some of you have a problem sleeping up at night. You got worries on your mind. You got worries in your spirit. And you got anxiety rising up in you. You don't know what belongs tomorrow or what you're going to do. Can I tell you, could it be that the devil's keeping you up at night just because you are actually keeping him up at night? I believe the church is appointed and anointed by God to give the devil the worst excedrin headache he ever had in his entire life. I don't buy this business of, oh, what's the devil going to do next? What's the devil going to do here? Oh, Lord, we don't know what's coming over the horizon. I'll tell you who's coming over the horizon. Jesus is on the horizon. He's waiting at the door. And it's the devil's worst nightmare that we get a hold of it. And we say, God, I'm living in the last days. And I'm going to act like it. I'm going to live like it. I'm going to make sure the devil knows. What some of y'all need to do is make the devil wish he really did take you out last year. That's enough of that. I got something burning on my heart. I'll be honest with you, I have no clue where I'm going with this. But I, I know what I feel. And if I don't obey what I feel, that bowl of ice cream ain't going to taste so good after tonight. So Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah 61. Beginning of verse 1. How many loves your pastor and first lady? Here at the Bible Church. Don't forget those dates of Brother Taylor. Great man of God, you enjoy him. And I believe the Lord has crossed his and pastor's path for such a time as this. <laughs> Isaiah 61 and verse 1. If you have it, say amen. amen. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Isaiah prophesying now. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach. Good tidings unto the meek. Now. It's easy just to read through this real quickly. Yes. But no, notice, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Yes. Notice the semicolon. Because the reason the Spirit of the Lord is upon me is because he hath anointed me. Yes. What did he anoint me to do to preach good tidings unto the meek? What did he anoint me to do? He hath sent me to bind up the broken heart. Oh, yes. To proclaim liberty to the captives. And the opening of the prison to them. Somebody say them. them. That are bound. Why did he anoint me to proclaim the acceptable year? Of the Lord. Amen. Comma. And. The day. Woo. Of vengeance. Yes. Of our God. Notice now. He, he, in the same sentence. He's anointing me. To preach good tidings to the meek. He has anointed me. And he has sent me to bind up the broken heart. He's anointed me to proclaim liberty to the captive. He's anointed me to open the prison to them that are bound. He's anointed me to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And you can't proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord without proclaiming the day of vengeance of our God. And I find this strange. After he declares the vengeance of our God, why are you proclaiming this? To comfort all that mourn. Yes. Yes. To appoint unto them, somebody say them, yes. that mourn in Zion. Yes. To give unto them, somebody say them, yes. beauty yes. 
for ashes. Yes. The oil of joy yes. for mourning. Mm -hmm. The garment of praise yes. for the spirit of heaviness. That they, somebody say they, they. might be called trees of righteousness. Yes. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. Yes. And they, somebody say they, they. shall build. The old ways put. Now the one that got anointed ain't doing this now. It's the they Amen. of whom he was anointed for. Right. And they shall build the old ways. <laughs> they shall raise up the former desolations. And they shall repair the waste cities. The desolations of many generations. I know I'm taking my time reading, but I'm going somewhere with this. The book of Luke the book of Luke chapter 4 beginning in verse 16 for the sake of time just listen and Jesus is coming to Nazareth now where he had been brought up and as his custom was because even Jesus went to church I'm going to sit there and park a while as his custom was pastor he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day because forget not for to the assembling of yourself together in the house of the yes, Lord. Yes. Amen. And Jesus, and he, he stood up to read. Yes. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he found, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me. Here's the reason why the Spirit of the Lord is on me. He anointed me to preach the gospel yeah. to the poor. Yeah. He has sent me to heal the broken heart. To preach deliverance to the captives. And recovering of sight to the blind. Amen. And to set at liberty them that are bruised. Yeah. To preach the acceptable year of of the Lord. I want you to look at verse 19. I want you to look at that little dot. That little dot after the word Lord. That is not what is in Isaiah. Everybody notice? Right. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister. Somebody say the minister. Yeah. Or shall I say, and again, he gave it to them. Yeah, amen. He gave it to the they people yes. and sat down. And the eyes of all of them were in the synagogue, were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Amen. Would you put your Bibles down and would you raise your hands? I want you to ask specifically for the Holy Ghost to minister to you tonight. Jesus wants to do something in this house. I feel a great anointing. I feel a great power from on high that's here. I want to do something for somebody. We did receive it here tonight. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We're mindful of you, Lord. We're mindful of your presence. We're mindful of your spirit. We're mindful of your glory. Lord, our attention is turned upon you. And God, we ask for you to minister us into this hour right now. Lord, let your word go forth and accomplish that which pleaseth you. And God will never fail to give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody say amen. amen. The anointing has always been something that's caught my attention. And I, the more the, the, the more I get older, the more I hear people using this word anointing more loosely than what the Bible uses it for. I, I, I've heard and we've said it before and we say it right. We'll, we'll leave the house and say, wow, Pastor was really anointed tonight. Wow, Brother Austin was really anointed of the Lord tonight. Well, First Lady really had it going on. She, she, was, she had a special anointing on her tonight. And we've all no doubt in some time, place or another, have left the house saying, wow, the anointing of the Lord sure was good. 
But I wonder if we really understand what this anointing is all about. I fear as we, as some of us grow older in God, that we 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 put a label on a preacher getting red faced, sweaty, and screaming through a microphone, and label it the anointing. Yeah, that's right. Well, that's about what I thought. I told you I didn't know where I was going. <laughs> we leave the house. And go, wow, they, they, was ripped. they was really on fire tonight. They preached the barn down. They, 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 they burned it up tonight. Wow, they was really anointing. And yes, that we do get red faced when the anointing comes. And yeah, we will get a little sweaty when the anointing comes. And yeah, I might scream a little through a microphone, as silly as it sounds, when the anointing comes. But shall we never forget my screaming, my sweating, and my red face is not the anointing. I'm going to say it to the hammer through our minds. That in and of itself is not the anointing. You can say, well, Brother Russell, you sure are a fireball. Well, guess what? If the Lord tears is coming and I get a little older, when Brother Austin is up in his 70s and 80s, I'm not going to preach like I do now. Why? Because my flesh is weak. But somebody answer me the question, just because my flesh gets weak and I can't sound as good as I used to and I, don't, and I can't preach as hard as I used to, does that lessen my anointing any? No. But can I tell you, if we aren't careful, we'll let you know tonight. But how come we walk away disappointed just because a preacher can preach a certain way? How come we walk away disappointed just because the organ didn't get with the preacher in the right octave or in the right chord? Can I tell you, if we're not careful, we'll label the anointing as some cheap ointment. Where you get that, Brother Austin? Because some of you turn on your TV and you look at some of these charismatic cowboys and you turn the TV off and say, well, they may not have the truth, but they're sure anointed. Yeah, I'm coming looking for you tonight. Well, they might not be in the truth. They might not believe in holiness, but should they sure go to touch of God pray. And I, if we are in this mindset, we can listen to a tape. Watch it. How many times have we listened to a tape of a preacher and said, well, my goodness. That's a preacher from Preachersville. They sure sound good. They sure preach good. And t then to see them. And not just see them. Wait till we see their wife. Then we end up scratching our head. Oh, man, y'all feel that? Yeah. That's when I was speak up right there. Yeah. And we see that well. They sure had me full. Yeah. Well, I thought they had the goods. Why? Because you don't know the anointing. Yeah. The gifts and callings, yes, they are without repentance. Yes, they are without repentance, but can I tell you, people can conjure up and call it the anointing. You can go all over your internet, go on YouTube, go on Instagram, you can go search any charismatic church you want. They'll have their little praise break. They'll go, one, two, three, go. <laughs> and we sit back and the Jezebel's ding-a-lings are flopping up and down. Well, I don't see how, don't give her a concussion because those earrings smacking her on the side of the head. Got the red lipstick on. Got the mini skirts. Got their high heels. That are foot long. And they're up there saying they're shouting the victory. And they want to call that the anointing. I call to tell somebody, we better know that spirit truth from the spirit of air. I want to find the real anointing. The real power of God. If you've got enough Holy Ghost to shout you, you've got enough Holy Ghost to cleanse you. If you've got enough fire to get up and dance before the Lord, then you ought to have enough fire to get up on Monday morning, put your long dress on, put your long sleeves on, get the makeup on your face. Hello, what am I doing here for?
We fall into that trap that everything shouts. Yeah. Is of the Lord. Yeah. I'll put it this way. Those people shout because there ain't enough that stall chatter. Amen. And God's going to get his praise if he does have to get it from a sinner. If he'll get it from a rock, he'll get it from a sinner. I hear you. Brother Austin, don't mess this up. Well, you just buckle up because I ain't quite there yet. We're about to take this thing over the guardrail. But we walk away and call it whether we admit it or not, Pastor. It puts a question in our minds and say, right. and a little later we ask, how can they shout like that? Yeah. And they live like that. <coughs> you like this? I do. Amen. And we wonder, how can they preach like that? But they, they, the, the people don't live nothing. Uh, that's right. So, well, 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 they might not have the truth, but they really got something with the Lord. How can you have something with the Lord who is truth? That's right. And not have the truth. If you don't have the truth, you ain't got nothing. Amen. Please, please don't think. I love them precious people. They, 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 they need the sure enough Holy Ghost. They, they, they need the Holy Ghost that just won't shout you, but that will change your whole life. He'll, he'll, he'll shout you right out of that miniskirt. Into a long one. Uh, I, I, I'm trying not to go there. I'm trying not to. I promise I ain't. I'm trying not to. Come on. All right. But we walk away and we're like, well, they, they got something with God. They, they, there's something there. There's some kind of going. But I wonder if we really know what the Bible says. What the anointing really is. First off, what, what Brother Austin had to learn early on in his ministry. Because the Lord called me at 14. I was sitting on the bus halfway back. Drop side. I'll never forget it. I told my mom before I come to service. And I told my wife too. I said, if that had never happened to Brother Austin, Brother Austin wouldn't be doing none of this stuff. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hello. I still believe that you've got to be called. You're not appointed by a pastor. You're not appointed by a first lady. Watch it. You ain't appointed by an organization. I don't care how many people come and prophesy over you that you're called to preach unless you get it for yourself. You better make sure that you can your kids that the Lord's called you and the Lord's anointed you. I can't tell you how many times Brother Austin has had to pull over on this highway called life and look back at that 14 year old boy that saw him preaching behind the pulpit before I ever did. Well, how many times I had to look back and say, God, you gave it to me and I might as well stay because you placed me here. But God, you, I, they call me, they didn't call me, but as long as your hand is upon me, I'll do whatever it is. I want you want me to do it. I've never done this stuff. If I hadn't been for that day, for that moment. The Lord changed my life that day. And I got to look at it. And I got to studying about this anointing. And as Brother Austin was growing in his ministry, I'm going to use me as an example so I don't hurt nobody's feelings. There was a point in my life, Sister Lisa, I felt like I had to prove to people yeah. I was really called. Yeah. Oh, well. Come on. That's right. No, y'all, so your faith is so good in God, you don't care what anybody thinks about you. I wanted to make sure that everybody knew Sister Marie. Bro, awesome, really wasn't on it. I wasn't just preaching because I was a pastor's grandson. I want people to know that I, I really had an encounter with God. But that, that led down a road of frustration because it didn't matter what I did. I wasn't going to prove to anybody nothing. That's right. Because until the Lord made manifest that his hand 
was on my ministry, I could do the same thing. And with that, I learned. Because I, I wanted people to know that I, Brother Austin didn't lose his anointing. Brother Austin didn't do this. Brother Austin did that. And can I tell you, that was the wrong spirit. Well, we're going to Sunday school tonight. It's all right. Thank you, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I wanted to prove to everybody. Austin still got it. So I was going through my teenage years because, uh, you know, the rumor had it. Just wait till Austin did this, and he'll finally go wild. Wait till Austin do this, and he'll finally turn loose. Wait till Austin do this. I had preachers walk up to me and say, if you'll come with me, I'll help you out. We'll go places. I had people call me preachers that you know of that call me on the, the phone and try to send me to go preach at football stadiums before a youth crowd. And, uh, they, they're trying to send me off and they call me on the phone and tell me all kinds of dreams they had. And say, well, Brother Austin, it's time for you to go. If you don't go, there's something bad going to happen. You, you, you need to turn loose. You need to get out there. You need to experience some stuff. And I, I just let them ramble and say, well, I love you, bye. <laughs> last thing they expected was they didn't expect me to call my pastor. <laughs> right after I had hit the hang up button, I hit the dial button all over again. And that was the first man I called. First man I told. He said, I just want to tell you, so-and-so called me. Told me they're trying to hook me up with this and hook me up with that. Yes. Yeah, hold on. I'm going somewhere. I don't know where I'm going yet, but I'm going somewhere. <laughs> And what that because what you realize, what I was learning that the anointing flows from the head down. Uh -huh. yes, sir. And if I get from underneath the head, right. I get from I, I get out from underneath the flow. Yes. Right. Oh, what's now? That's why you ain't seen yet. Oh you ain't seen a ministry blessed of God yet. That stepped away from the head. Amen. Can I teach you that on a Wednesday night? Come on. It's hard for you get to be anointed when the head that got anointed is no longer your head. Amen. That's right. But now you claim another head. Well, he thinks got more than one head. It's a monster. Amen. There's a beast in Revelation for that. Amen. <laughs> don't get me started on that. But they don't realize, brother Mike, it's the same spirit that is swooping in. That beast is coming in. We don't have 666 yet. We don't have the mark on our right hand or on the forehead yet. But you know what? He's making a question mark in a lot of our minds. Amen. Yes, sir. The first question mark in your Bible, I said it before, I want to say it again. Uh, the first question mark was given by the serpent when he said, Did God really say what the serpent did? The first mistake the serpent did uh, and the first mistake he fell for is when the devil questioned the authority of the head, which was Adam. Uh, and she didn't realize that Adam had a head, uh, which was uh, uh, Adam had a head uh, that was above him. Uh, and if Eve was going to stay in divine order, can I tell you, if Eve had stayed in her place uh, and stayed submitted unto her head, she never would have partook of the fruit. And if Adam had stayed submitted to his head, which was Christ, he never would have listened to his wife Eve. My God, I wish I could talk it. If you want to be blessed, if you want to be anointed, if you want the blessings of God on your life, you got to stay where your head's at. You got to stick with the head when you don't agree with it. Yeah, that's right, right. To know in your Bible, it's impossible to submit to something that you agree with. That's right. How can I be submitted to a pastor when I agree with him? I ain't submission. That's agreement. <laughs> but when I disagree with him and I submit, you mean you agree with the pastor? You disagree with the pastor sometimes? Yeah. I don't always like little days. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you don't always agree? Yeah, I like Japanese food way too much. 
they bring out rice and steak and chicken and they give you this stuff called yum yum sauce and it really is. Hey, hey I got a witness right there. I, I'm pretty sure Japanese is only food because of that sauce in that container right there. If you ain't tried it, hey, don't knock it till you try it. It's good. Oh, uh, I'm getting ready to cause a civil war here, right? Let's move on. So when Pastor gets up and he talks about how much he don't like Japanese on Sunday mornings. I was planning on going to London after the service. They got a Japanese restaurant up there. It's good, but guess what? I love them. I don't fall out. And some people would fall out. And that passion never mind. And you know what? That's silly. So I'm saying, well, that, that really is silly, but guess what? A lot of our situations that we want to disagree and fall out about is just as silly. Oh, can I teach on a Wednesday night? But when, here, here's when you know when you're really growing in God. When you can put your differences aside and still walk together. Amen. Amen. He might be my brother, but he ain't my twin. And But he don't have to be a twin to be my brother. So how come in the spirit we expect everybody to be our twins? And if they ain't our twins, if they don't look like us, act like us, like what we like, like dislike what we dislike, no, you can't be my brother. That's right. That's right. You won't find nobody in the opposite than me in this sport right here. <laughs> what I is, he ain't. What he ain't, I is. <laughs> what he likes, I hate. <laughs> He likes going to crowd. I do too. I'm rather fast. <laughs> you feel that tension? I ain't try I ain't trying to be funny, I'm trying to get a point across. I'll go to the next door, I'll go to the Olive Garden. They'll, they'll, they'll give me pasta. That's all I need. They can put butter on pasta for all I care. I need it. It's good. He don't like it as good as I do. And I don't like it as good as he does. But guess what? Say something y'all don't like me already. Because I don't like things going crap. But guess what? That don't change the fact that he's still my brother. You won't catch me in a red shirt no more. But guess what? You, you'll hardly catch him in a white shirt. Well, why do you wear a white shirt, brother Austin? It, 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 that ain't important. Why do you wear colored shirts? That's what I'm going to ask you. At least I ain't picking. <laughs> but he's still a brother. <clears throat> he might wear a different colored suit than what I wear. Because if it ain't dark, I probably won't wear it. But guess what? He's still my brother. And oh um, yes. But I can let those things of which we disagree about and what we dislike come between us. How different is it in the spirit when I look at you and just because we disagree on certain things, if it ain't black, white, or red letter edition, it ain't worth falling out over. Amen. Come on. Well, y'all shout while go. I said if it ain't over the written letter or clearly against the spirit of Almighty God, it ain't worth falling out over. Amen. Amen. Oh, goodness. I know this far. If God ever calls any of y'all to preach, don't leave the church because you didn't get pulpit time. Don't leave the church because Pastor didn't call you to preach to say, Hey, there's a bunch of people in Walmart that need the gospel. There's a lot of people at Food City that ain't heard about the 
fullness of God or Jesus' name baptism, they need a preacher up there. You want to know why? Because we fall into the trap that we can only get anointed when we got a crowd, when we got an organ, when we got a drum, when we got a music, when we got singers. No, the anointing ought to be upon you every single time. Well, somebody said, well, what that brother stuff all mean? It didn't have anything to do with the anointing. It has everything to do with the anointing. Yes, sir. For he said, the spirit of the Lord, God, is upon me. And why is it upon me? Because he hath anointed me to preach. He anointed him to preach. But no, I, 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 I want I want to read this all over again. Isaiah 61. I, I, I want to know the reason for this anointing. Well, why in the world? Well, what is the purpose of the anointing? The, the purpose of the anointing, one, is to preach the tidings unto the meek. The purpose of the anointing, number two, is to be sent to bind up the broken heart. The purpose of the anointing, number three, is to proclaim liberty yeah. to the captives. The purpose of the anointing, number four, is to open the prison to them which are bound. Amen. You know what? Maybe this is it, 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 it's simple. As simple gets. But it's something that's hit me like a hammer. Anybody tell me how anything, any of those four things has anything to do with the one that was anointed. Show me in the scripture where the anointing ever benefited seclusively, all by himself. Show me in the scripture where the anointing ever benefited the one who was anointed him and him alone. Amen. He wasn't anointed to show everybody he was anointed. That's right. God was anointing him for a purpose. God was anointing him for a reason. And it wasn't just so he could make proof of his ministry. Paul told Timothy for Timothy to do that, not the anointing. <laughs> oh, we're, we're going somewhere. The reason I'm anointing you is to proclaim the year of the Lord. To proclaim the vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. What does that have anything to do with him? The anointing had nothing to do with the one that was anointed. Does this make sense tonight? Yes. yes. The anointing had nothing to do with the one who was anointed. But the one who was anointed was anointed for somebody else. Yes, sir. To a point, here is who he was anointed for. The four letter word, the fourth word in verse three. Them. The reason that your anointing is for them. God did not anoint Danny Short for Danny Short. God anointed Danny Short. Anis May Short, not for Anis May Short, but for my mama. But where are you getting at, brother? Oh, I'm tell I'm showing you where I'm getting at. If I'm anointed just to show everybody I'm anointed, then I'm not anointed. That's the fake anointing. If I gotta get up here and entertain you to prove that I'm anointed, then I'm not truly anointed. But let me tell you where the real anointing is. When a man rises up and asks for prayer on his wrist because he has a knot, the real anointing will cause that. That sears that not just dissolve under the power of the Holy Ghost choir because he anointed him to bless them. I'm anointed to preach the gospel to the meek. The word meek in 
the original means to the needy. Yeah. I'm anointed because I am to bind up the broken heart. Oh, yeah. My first question is this, why is people needy? Why is people broken hearted? Sin. Amen. Why is people <laughs> held captive and need to be set at liberty? Sin. Why? Why is people locked up in prison and need somebody to deliver them from the bonds? Sin. And the only way to get a licking in on sin is for somebody to get under the anointing. What I tell you a few weeks ago, the Lord wants us to understand some things. We want, we got, if you leave here knowing the purpose, the reason why people are anointed, then I've done my job tonight and I'll sleep Amen. good. But when you're anointed, you're anointed for others, yes, sir. not for yourself. That's my, I'm not throwing stones, I promise. Please understand my spirit, I'm not throwing stones. That's why people that leave a man of God, because they don't have a pulpit, they don't have the ministry time, and they don't have a crowd, and they don't have this, and they don't have that. I, I really question the anointing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why? Because they're leaving because it, it all suddenly became all about. They're leaving because, oh, oh goodness, it become about me all of a sudden. When the anointing ain't about you. I'm going to take this a step further. I got y'all amen to me. Now I tricked y'all. <laughs> Uh, uh, everybody was amen to me about a preacher being anointed, and everybody was amen to me about a minister being anointed. You got to show me Bible where you got proof where anybody can be full of the Holy Ghost and not be anointed. You are anointed. Why was he anointed? Because the Spirit of the Lord. Yes, sir. The only way for you not to be anointed is for the Spirit of the Lord to be nowhere in sight. But if the Spirit of the Lord has ever been, and it, it ain't just upon you, it's in you. And you, uh, and some of y'all been believing a lie from hell that you ain't got an anointing, you ain't got a calling. I come to expose the devil tonight and say you are anointed. If you got the Holy Ghost, been baptized in His name, then God has put His Spirit upon you and he put it upon you so much that it got in you and when it got in you he anointed you to preach I ain't called to preach belong to <laughs> I ain't called to minister follow me was pastor say hogwash? <laughs> what do you say, pastor? Oh, All these people that got a problem with women preachers just because they don't know their Bible. <laughs> pastor gets up and he says, "Well, I don't believe in a man preacher." That's right. Why? Because the Holy Ghost is the preacher. That's right. Come on, yeah. Hold it. You might not be called to hold a microphone behind a pulpit. But pastor just told you, you got the preacher inside of you. And you say you don't have a calling. How you can be full of the spirit of the preacher and not You know what preaching is? It's just a declaration. When I tell somebody in Food City... Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. I just preached it. I didn't have to scream. I didn't have to do a backflip. I didn't have to do a cartwheel. All I had to do, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for remission of sins, then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I just preached it. Amen. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you saying, Brother Austin? Go, go back. I believe it's Acts chapter 1, verse 8. 
And ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses. What? Witnesses. What? Witnesses. witnesses. Into Samaria. Into Judea. Into the uttermost parts. He spoke to five, he, he spoke to five hundred people on that day. And only 120 showed up for the party. And he told all 120. Who, who preached the first sermon? Peter. But guess what? All of them had a calling. To go and be a witness. Why? Because the same Holy Ghost that Peter's got, you got. The same Holy Ghost that caused him to get up and say these are not drunk as he supposed. But this is that spoken by the prophet Joel. That in the last days, saith God, I put out upon my spirit upon all flesh. Well, Brother Austin, I don't feel like I'm able to do that. I don't feel like I'm able to quote scripture like you. I don't feel like I'm able to, to witness to somebody. I don't know my Bible as well as you. Then my question to you tonight, where do you stand out with your head? If you'll get under the fountain, if you'll submit yourself to the, to the God of glory, to the man of God, and to the spirit of God, it can help to do a work on the inside of you and from the abundance of the heart the mouth the mouth the mouth if I put this word in my heart if I put this word down deep and I made my heart full from the abundance of my heart I will speak the word a truth You are going. This church, anybody's got the Holy Ghost in this building. I come with a simple word from the Lord tonight. And that is to tell you, you are anointed. Because to encounter the Spirit of God is to encounter the anointing. The anointing is to serve this purpose, to give one the ability to bind up the broken heart, to bring, to, to set those that are in captivity free, to proclaim the acceptable. Some, some of y'all disappointed tonight. We gotta, some, there, there's gotta come a point in our walk with God. Can I say this nicely? And we gotta put our big britches on. We gotta put our big skirt on. Amen. We gotta grow up. Amen. And realize, hey, I might not be Danny Short, but I got a job to do. Yes, sir. Hey, I might not be First Lady, but there's something that God wants me to do. Can I do? What, what do we think that God wants? just for us to live our life. Some of us are just living to die. But I wonder how many of us is living to live again. To live forever. To live beyond this world. You don't believe me? Here's your Bible. John, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 20. John is talking to some Holy Ghost filled saints. First off, huh, this is funny. Some of y'all thought I was just throwing stones at people. Well, I guess John did too. Verse 19 said, or verse 18, little children, it is the last time. And as he heard that Antichrist shall come, even now, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby ye know that it is the last time. They went out. From us. That meant they used to hang with us. They used to be a part of us. They used to worship with us. They used to eat with us. They, 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 they used to go along with us. He said that they went out, but now they're not with us anymore. They went out from us. Amen. Why did they go out from you? But they were not of us. 
For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued. That's, that, that's Bible. Come on. That ain't ARV version. That's KJV. If they had been of us, Pastor, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye, somebody say, that's me, have an unction. Somebody say unction. From the Holy One. And ye know all things. That word unction in the original is only used three times in your Bible. Only one time is it translated as unction. The other two times, let's see what it was translated. Verse 27. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. Verse 20 is translated as unction. Verse 27 is translated as anointing. That anointing abideth in you. John wasn't writing to just preachers. This wasn't the book of Revelation where he said unto the angel of the church of Ephesus right. No. He was writing to believers. And he said he have an unction. When someone proclaims to be called to preach, I don't look, I don't, I don't sit and look back, sit back and see how fired up they get. No, no. I don't sit back. And see how red faced they get, or how much they shout, and how many cartwheels they can do in one time. You know what Brother Austin looks for, and I want us to be able to look for. I look for that unction that John talked about. I look for that anointing that has the ability for those that are captive to be freed. I look for that unction, Brother Dennis. I don't know how I, I, I can usually tell you if somebody's got it when they don't. Not 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 I mean anything bad. I look for that connection in the spirit. Yes. Where I feel that anointing flowing and it's helping and feeding the people. And there's been times it's just not been there. And that's not to throw stones at anybody. It's just it, they those saying goes different strokes for different folks. They got a ministry. Right here just ain't it. Well, you can hear a rat looking ice right about now. But when I wait for that unction, and I wait for that anointing, that just doesn't shout people because anybody can shout. I look for that anointing. But well, well, another place it says, the anointing destroys. The yoke of what? The yoke of every sin. The yoke of every weight. Some of you are delivered tonight because you got a touch of the anointing. <laughs> and it's not because of the anointed one. When you get a revelation, it's not about the one who's anointed, but the one who anoints. And when that anointing runs freely, if I had time and I don't, go home. Read Isaiah 58 and 6. When Isaiah prophesies, it's not just the fast which I have chosen. To set them that are captive at liberty. To lose the bonds of those that are bound. And I, and I'm just paraphrasing. Go home and read it. He connects fasting to the anointing. Yes. It's in there. Yes. The same anointing that set brings liberty to the captive. Amen. Yes. 
is brought by the fast of the people. Y'all humble themselves. Why? Because it's hard to get anointed when you get above your head. I preached before. I preached again. God will never anoint. And not that Danny Short's any special person, but he's due very great honor. But if you're sitting around and think God's anointed you above that of your past, I'm sorry. I don't know what anointing you're getting under. I'd say the same for the precious people from Kentucky. Not one of them is going to be anointed over Brother Connor. Why? Because God's got a government. God's got a structure. God's got a head. God has a body. And it flows the way God orchestrated it to go. And God don't, and God don't bend his own rules and he ain't going to break his own rules, not even for us. Pastor will agree with me. Every pastor needs a pastor. Yes, sir. Why? Because when a pastor submits to another pastor, that gives him a greater anointing because he's got anointing flowing on him from another head. Watch now. And when that pastor has another pastor, wait, there's more anointing. And that pastor has another pastor, there's more anointing. Why? Because it's like a threefold cord. When it's wound together, it is not easily broken. Amen. I, I come to tell somebody tonight we need to be careful yes, sir. about who we say who's really anointed. Hey, that's right, huh? We need to be careful. God has never anointed anybody to preach the Trinity. God has never anointed anybody to baptize in tithes. God has never anointed anybody to preach any kind of false doctrine. Because preaching the Trinity is to take them away from the truth. And it is only the truth that will make somebody free. Amen. Just like the anointing, it makes them. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. Then a little light from heaven filled my soul. Just a little talk. That's me getting under the fountain. That's me getting under the anointing. That's me getting under the spirit. Show me somebody that's anointed, and I'll show you somebody that had that God has blessed with the anointing and the ability to set the liberty. Those are captive to bind the broken heart, to set the liberty to those that are bruised. What kind? What kind of morning is it if you can't clean up from the neck up and it don't change the way you walk and it don't change the way you talk and it don't change the way you feel and it don't give you a new heart. He said, I'll give you a new heart. You got a heart of flesh. You got a heart of stone. But I'll give you a heart of flesh that will be sensitive. When the anointing comes, when the anointing comes, when the anointing comes, when the anointing comes, you are anointed. Raise your hands right now and just begin to talk to the Lord. I've gone way too long, I'm sorry. But I had to deliver what I felt the Lord gave me. Some of you here tonight is saying that you can't do it. Some of you is just like, but I, brother, I just, I, I just don't get it. I just don't have it like you all do. You got the same Holy Ghost. Some of you've been believing a lie for years, and you believe that lie, and you, for some reason, believe that. God filled you with the Holy Ghost just to fill up you. God has anointed you for such a time as this. You know how strong I believe it, First Lady. 
just as Jesus single-handedly picked out Peter, James, and John to start the church, I believe Jesus has picked out some people here at Bible Way Church to wrap this thing up that Peter, James, and John started. God wants somebody to realize I put a calling on your life. You might never hold a microphone. You might never stand behind a pulpit, but there's an anointing. God wants you. God's anointing you for you to realize it's time for you to help somebody. Because what is the church for? What is the church for? If it is not anointed to help those that are lost. What is good? What good is a church that isn't anointed to help the broken heart? Come on, come on, people need to know when they come to this house, there's power here. There's anointing here. That there's a spirit of God here to touch the lives. And it's going to be more than just a pastor on fire for God. It's got to be the saints and the pews on fire for God. It's got to be more than the first lady on fire for God. It's got to be some precious women of God that's sitting in the congregation that's been talking to the Lord that's had that oil dripping off their head, down their skirts, down to the hip of their garments, and it's even treading under their foot. Come on. Somebody needs to come to this altar tonight and just say, God, help me. Help me to get under the anointing. Help me, God. Lord, I want to be used for your glory. I want to be used. Come on, there's a work you want to do in Raven. There's a work. There's a work. Anoint me, Lord. Here it comes. Jesus. Here it comes. You are anointed to do something. 